I am not a role model. I'm not paid to be a role model. I am paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court. Parents should be role models. Just because I dunk a basketball doesn't mean I should raise your kids. You made the commercial for Nike, I'm not a role mm -hmm. model. Uh, did you believe that? I, I did. It, 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 what I was trying to do, uh, I remember, and that's probably, even to this day, probably the thing I'm most proud of because it always starts a debate. So I went to Nike, I think it was 89. I said, I want to make this commercial. And they're like, are you freaking nuts? I says, I says okay, so we're going to start a debate mm -hmm. about the role model thing. And I says, this, you're going to get killed. I said, I can handle it. I'm a big boy. Uh, and, and I said, this is, well, why do you want to make the commercial? I says, I noticed something. Okay, y'all have us speaking at all these schools. And a lot of these schools are segregated. And I says, when I go to a, uh, a white school, I always say, uh, well, a predominantly white school. I said, well, how many of y'all want to play in the NBA? Only like 5 to 7%. I said, well, what do you want to do? I want to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a teacher, fireman, policeman. I'm like, okay. And I go to the predominantly black school. I said, well, how many of y'all want to play sports in the NBA? It was pretty much 100%. Then I realized these kids are brainwashed to think they can only be successful through athletics and entertainment. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I, I did like a three-year window where I was like going to these schools, and I said, hey, pay attention. Watch watch, watch this here. The people who, was, who were around me, and they're like, these black kids think they can only be successful through athletics and entertainment. And these white kids, like, they want to be doctors, lawyers, engineers. And I says, well, I want these black kids to think like that. And it just gave me a platform. And, yeah, in the media, which what they do, they always tell you what you meant to say. Yeah. I said, no, I know what I meant to say. <laughs> and I, I, I was just trying to start a debate. And the thing about Nike, Nike was like, you're not going to believe this. I think 90% of the letters we're getting are positive. I said, first of all, I knew the letters were going to be positive because my message was positive. I'm not trying to shirk my responsibility of being a role model. I'm trying to start a debate, and then I can say exactly what I mean to say. And even when I'm asked about that question today, I says, can I explain? I wasn't trying to. Like, athletes are role models. But I don't want young black kids thinking they can't do uh, things other than play sports and be entertainers. So I got, I kind of got my point across. But like I say, I, I'm not worried about taking no heat. Yeah. I said, I just wanted, to, like, part of part of being in this thing and having this platform, you should uh, be able to talk about anything. And sometimes it's going to be unpopular. Uh, you know, like. But it starts a debate. Yes. When we first met, I asked you a question. Uh, we were in Vegas. Uh, and I said, hey, uh, we were just sitting there talking, and I said, why do you say money don't solve money problems? And you explained to me, he says, yeah, you can't pay your way out of money trouble. Yeah. And that's probably the biggest mistake <clears throat> that I've made in my entire life. You know, I probably got $4 million I gave to friends who I shouldn't have because, you know, you get all this money and you want your friends to like you. But just giving people money, you just, number one, you become an enabler. But it eventually always ruins your relationship. Because if you give somebody $500,000, the first time you tell them no, they hate you. They're, you, you bought a $500,000 enemy. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, but when you told me that, I was already into it deep. Yeah. Just like all the players. Like all the players, like, yo, man, my family... They drive me crazy. Uh, friends are drive me crazy, and I had to learn a very valuable lesson. I had to learn the word no. Yeah. You had to lose a lot of friends, and not feel bad about it. Because I always tell people, deep down, everybody want to be liked. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but you can't. Yeah, but you know, I had a family member call me pissed off one time. Said, "You got a half a million dollars worth of car sitting in your garage." And they're getting ready to turn my lights off. Uh. How do you? How can you do that? What? And my question was, do you have a job? Okay. <laughs> yeah. And they said, no, I don't have a job. 
I said, well, let me tell you, <laughs> your job is getting a job. Yeah. If you don't have a job, your job should be working as hard as you would be working if you had a job. Yes. So if you don't have a job, don't call me yeah. about how much money I oh. got sitting in a garage. Hey. <laughs> if you're working 80 hours a week and you need a little help to get by, then call me. But if you're sitting on the couch yeah. watching TV, don't call me yeah. about how much money you don't have. Yeah. They love to spend your money. Damn right. And if you yeah. give the reason I say money doesn't solve money problems is they didn't get there from lack of money. They got there from making bad choices, mm -hmm. spending money in the wrong places, spending money that they need for things they need. It doesn't matter what you need. It matters what you can afford. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you yeah. need. I needed this coat. Well, you can't afford that coat, so it doesn't matter what you need. Yeah. It's what matters what you can afford. That, that, I, I wish uh, there's only two people told me that. It was you and Grant Hill's mom, Janet. Because after I talked to you, I spent some time uh, with Calvin and, and his wife. And I, every time I see Miss Hill, I just give her a big hug. I said, Miss Hill, Grant just signed for $100 million. Why are y'all still working? She says, Charles, get over here. Let me talk to you. <laughs> she <laughs> says, this is my number one advice that I'm going to tell you. Don't you start taking care of your family. Yeah. It's going to ruin your life. It's going to ruin your relationship. And every time I see her, I say, and I said, you know what? I wish I had to listen to you sooner. And Dr. Phil, because it did come back to bite me, because your family resents you if you don't keep them on the payroll forever. Damn right. My dad used to say, beyond that, he said, you better make a little profit off your friends and family, because your enemies don't come around too much. <laughs> That's exactly you right. Know, not only do you not yeah. give them money, I, you ought to charge them for yeah. what you do. Yep. I mean, I, 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 I totally get it. And we are in a different world. So... You've seen the statistic that, what is it, like 80%? Professed athletes go broke. Yeah, within two years. Mm -hmm. out, by the time they're out of the league, they're either bankrupt or in serious financial trouble, mm -hmm. divorced, drugs or alcohol. Why do you think that is? Well, number one, your family and friends always want money. That's yeah. first and foremost. Um, that's, that's the number one reason. But also all the free time you got. Yeah. If you got a drinking problem or a drug problem and money, it escalates. The people always say, Charles, what's your normal day like in the NBA? I says, well, depending. Some teams practice at 10. Some teams practice at 11. Uh, practice lasts an hour and a half, maybe two if you're playing bad. But you don't go crazy because you're playing four games a week. Right. And then I'm off for the day. They're like, what do you mean? I'm like, what do you are we I said, well, first of all, we have a game practice on the last, like, 30 minutes. But if you don't have a game, I'm pretty much done by noon every day. Yeah. And you got a guy who got unlimited income because you're getting $200 a day per diem. Yeah. People don't even think about that. We get $200 a day per diem. Yeah. Uh, you, you can get plenty of alcohol and drugs with $200 a day. And I said, if you got any bad habits, and then that go to piggyback on that, I told you, when you retire, you don't have a job. I mean, there's very few TV jobs. Yeah, it, it stops the flow. It stops the Bang. flow. And you got 24 hours a day to do absolutely nothing. And if you drink too much or do drugs, it's, it's, it's the perfect storm. It's a long way to fall. It's it? a long way to fall. But I tell people, it, I, I call it the alien effect. No matter how great you are, in your mid-30s, they drop you off in this <laughs> in this foreign yeah. world and say, good luck. Yeah, good We're luck. We're done with you. Yeah. I said, I'm one of you got lucky when the television, because there's only a couple TV jobs. But for the rest of the guys, no matter how successful you are, in your mid-30s, most of the time your early 30s, they're going to say, hey, we really appreciate you. We thank you for everything. Good luck. Yeah. And you're like, well, I don't have a job. I don't have an education. I don't know what to do. Yeah, but we don't worry about you. We got to play the season next. Yeah, we got a new guy. We got a new guy. He's in your locker. Room. Yeah, and that's how some of these guys really struggle uh, when they retire. Yeah, yeah, they really struggle. Yeah, I mean, I look at it even in when they're in the league. It's like you got young guys, pure testosterone flowing through their veins. They got too much money, too much mm -hmm. time. Yeah, they're young. They're not really well socialized yep. because they're young. They haven't been in the world yet. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, what could possibly go wrong here? Uh, and it's, it's like the, a candy store of bad stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, 
if you want alcohol, you can get it. You want girls, you can get it. You want drugs, you can get it. Uh, and I, uh, it's like it's it's like the perfect storm because anybody who got money, they're coming for it. Yeah, there's somebody out there. There's somebody out there trying to get your money.